So a topic that comes up a hell of a lot in every dating community that I think I've been a part of over the years is the idea of if it's okay to use dating apps to get yourself dates. Now, I'm going to take the opportunity, I think, to debunk this idea and why actually I think using dating apps is absolutely fine, but it is about finding an equilibrium or a balance between using dating apps and also meeting people in real life. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to give you the benefits or the pros of meeting people in real life and also using the dating apps, which I'm sure you will probably be aware of them, but I think just for the record, it's worth me covering. But then I do want to actually express the negatives or the uh, the cons of using dating apps and why using the apps is going to cause you a lot of social anxiety and make meeting women in real life a hell of a lot more challenging and difficult. So first of all, let, let's go into the actual benefits of uh, meeting people in real life. Like, okay, you're going down the street, you see someone that you like, you learn to take a risk, take a chance and go over and strike a conversation. By being able to talk to people, you are obviously continuing or improving your skills of conversation and you're also learning to be able to flirt, you're building your confidence and that is ultimately just gonna end up building the attraction towards you. And also, if you think about it, if you're walking down the street, and I think David, one of my other clients, David Thorpe, I think he said this, uh, that doing street approaching or doing daytime cold approaching or even just cold approaching at any time of the day uh, is like doing street Tinder. You're walking down the street, you see someone that you like, you're either swiping yes, you're swiping no. You either are attracted to them or you're not attracted to them. And if you are attracted to them, going over to say hello, giving a compliment and finding out if that person is right for you can be a great screening as well to even decide if you actually want to ask for their phone number and take them out on a date. And of course, if you're finding that you aren't attracted to them or if they don't have the personality type that you want or that you're looking for, then at least, you know, you're not wasting any time. You're not wasting hours upon hours or whatever, going on a date, spending money on someone that you're just not interested in. And ultimately, you are able to filter people out a lot better than you are if you are using a dating app. And it's then even easier to actually find relationships with people because you're not just relying on, you know, reading a bit of a bio, reading a profile of someone and then deciding if they're right for you or not. But saying that, it can be very time consuming if you really want to get the results out of doing any kind of daytime cold approach. Even if you've learned it to the, uh, the degree that you're able to go out um, just in like normal time. And by that, I mean like if you're maybe on your way to work or if you're going to the gym or going shopping for food or if you've got hobbies and you're on your way somewhere, then during that journey, if you do see someone that you like, you can actually incorporate your daytime cold approaching into your day and you can just, you know, for the extra few minutes that you'll spend here and there, you could end up meeting people. But for the people who get who really want to get the great results, you have to dedicate a hell of a lot of time to going out and talking to people and really, really building those numbers up in regards to how many people you actually speak to, which is why it's certainly a lot easier, I think, for people who are dating coaches or people who do like sabbaticals and they are spending a lot of time going out to approach or practice approaching or even going to networking events, speed dating and so on, that they then they are able to get the uh, the results that they're looking for. But not a lot of people have as much free time as these people who can just spend all day long approaching. You know, your typical guy is going to be working really long hours. He might not have the most amazing of salaries either. And that is absolutely okay. So then being able to budget and go for an option like a dating app is certainly a really, really good option. So then being able to just, you know, 
put some pictures up, certainly make a bio that kind of briefly shares who you are as a person can be just a very, very simple uh, passive way of being able to get attention towards you, you know, especially if you are at work or especially if you're traveling and so on, it can be a very nice, easy option. But should you be relying on it? Not really, because most people as well, they don't actually invest in their profile. You get people who will just stick any random picture up and, you know, if you're not putting stuff out that is visually representing you in the best possible light, then it's going to be very difficult for people to even go, yeah, you know what? I kind of like that that guy, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll swipe yes on him and why, why not? Let's see where that goes. You'll find that a lot of women, they'll just end up looking at the pictures, especially if there is guys who've got more professional photos and they'll be more interested in them. So you can end up losing out on a lot of opportunities if you're not actually investing in a good looking profile. So go to a photographer, get yourself dressed up, get photos taken of you with your favorite hobbies and interests that you've got that at least just flushes out a bit more of your personality rather than, you know, you just, maybe you're just like sitting there eating a burger or it's just you sitting on a bench which you know in the park which doesn't really tell that much and especially if you're also wearing like a tracksuit or a hoodie or something that's also not going to visually represent who you are as a person or put you in that kind of like date material kind of vibe um so with that also being said why not go to a photographer get that uh, get those better pictures that will make all of the difference. And also you get people who don't pay for the better versions or the better accounts on the dating apps. And sadly, in this day and age, especially with how the dating apps work and how the algorithms are, people who are paying are going to be more favorable. But even if you're paying, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to get matches. So you do have to make sure that everything is as good as it possibly can be on your profiles. Otherwise, you could be paying money and not getting any kind of result possible. So there's kind of like the balance really with, uh, I've kind of thrown in some cons in there as well. But there's your kind of balance of at least, you know, why you should end up using uh, dating apps as well as why definitely you do need to be meeting people in person. But where does the anxiety element come into this? Well, I'm going to just sort of like go through my notes, I think, on this one, because it's important that I can uh, cover, I think, all of the, uh, the points here. And the first one is that a lot of guys can get the addiction to swiping. It's very easy to just continuously keep on saying yes to everyone. And I have met guys who do that. They think, oh, well, if I just keep saying yes to everything, that's going to improve my matches. But that's not how the algorithm works. The algorithm matches you with people that you find attractive and then other people who find you attractive, of course. But if you keep just liking everything, it's going to kind of like dissolve what specific thing you're looking for. And in fact, the matches or the, not even the matches, but actually the images of the women that are being shown to you are just going to get worse and worse because you're not filtering. You're not showing the apps what kind of type of woman you're attracted to. And so it's just going to literally give you anything, if not the worst of the bunch, I hate to say, for you to just end up picking from. And if you're saying yes to them, then it's just going to assume that these women that are clearly not your type are your type. So there is an addiction with swiping and, and it's important again to just make sure that you're doing it appropriately if you can. But think about the effects that swiping or that addiction to swiping can have on your brain. Um, I was gonna say physique there, but it's really more on your brain. You're gonna be releasing all of those endorphins and, uh, and dopamine hits. That's gonna just make you feel good as you're swiping, as you're seeing these women, you know. And I've known men, actually, which uh, I hate to say, who almost treat uh, swiping as like uh, soft core, you know what. So just be wary that, you know, that the addiction to 
um, to swiping can be very much very similar to like a sex addiction. And it can then make it very difficult when you are um, on dates with people in real life in a sense that you can essentially get performance anxiety if let's say the date were to go well because you're encouraging your body and you're encouraging your brain to only get that hit when you're swiping so there there is uh, i'll I'll have to see if i can find that i know there's been some um some experiments and tests on that i will have to try and do my research again and try and bring that up it's only because i've i've recalled it but there is again that danger of being addicted to uh to swiping and also think about the reaction that you get when you're not really getting the results that you want from all of this swiping that you're doing you're gonna get very depressed and feel very anxious about the fact that you're not matching with anyone or you are matching with people but they just certainly aren't your type and you're going to think to yourself are you are you even attractive are you ugly does anyone even want you maybe you're just the lost cause you know everyone else seems to be getting good matches and meeting attractive people but you're incapable These limiting beliefs can certainly start taking over and that can be literally the ripple effect by not having any standards when you are going through dating apps. So you've got the addiction to swiping, you've got then the danger of getting the dopamine hit which could create a ripple effect of performance issues later on down the line because you're just creating the Uh, the attraction towards swiping rather than being able to talk to people in person Um, and also you're going to get a lot of limiting beliefs or feel very down about yourself if you are getting very disappointed in the results that you're getting from matches as well as just the quality of choice of women that are being shown to you as well. Now there's also the issue of isolation. Um, If you are a guy who does tend to work a lot and you're just, you know, constantly swiping, then that can be then the easier alternative to actually meeting people in real life because it can feel safer. And there's an issue with that, that you are separating or distancing yourself from actual social interactions. And what would be the byproduct of that? Social anxiety. So it's you know there is almost like a stepping stone there's like a chronological order of things that can happen to you and if you end up staying in isolation for too long then that's only going to cause even more problems i mean you could go down the danger of becoming more agoraphobic certainly uh creating a lot more social anxiety disorder within yourself um as well as uh what's the the word for it you can create um what's the word psycho something it's not going to turn you psycho um hang on let me just search for the word i can't remember for for the life of me here okay i've had a look for a couple of minutes that i i actually i can't find the word but certainly you know you could be causing a lot of mental health issues for yourself and depression and the like by staying in isolation by staying away from people and just being reliant on the dating apps to actually get yourself the dates that you're after so Again, this is why I do think it's important to actually balance going out and constantly talking to people, meeting new people even, because at least it is stopping that comfort zone from shrinking. And, you know, and it maybe if it's not expanding, at least you're getting it to stay the same. But you are learning new skills, you're uh, developing your confidence, you're keeping your anxiety at bay. And that really is the important thing. But if you are using the apps, invest in good photos, invest in a good bio, do go for the paid option. I hate to say it, but, you know, with this, you have to spend money, especially if you want to get the better quality results. And also don't be uh, just swiping yes on everything. Be picky. That is what's going to also get you the better results on the apps. But also on the flip side of that, If you can, go out, meet people, approach, talk to strangers, converse. Even if you're not going out to try and uh, get yourself phone numbers to go on dates, just the skill of talking to strangers is such a great, unique one 
that is beneficial in so many ways. So hopefully this video was useful for you. Again, my stance is that use both in person and the dating apps, but just don't be reliant on dating apps. It is not going to solve all your problems. And the more that you just solely invest in that, if you're someone who's not putting yourself out there, it is only going to make your life more worse. Okay. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. If you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment below on what you thought about this. Maybe there are some other points that I missed out. So I'd love to hear, uh, maybe if there are other things that you can say to guys, recommendations that they can do on their profile or in person to certainly find that balance that's maybe more suitable for them. But otherwise also, in fact also, Maybe you're someone who's experienced the anxiety because you've been reliant on apps. And I'd love to hear what you've been doing to try and break yourself out of that cycle too. So thank you very much for watching. I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy, and look forward to more videos coming from me in the future and hopefully as well some very new podcasts too.